We're back. That's right, we're back to working on the 1971 C-10 in Spanish gold. Old sneaky tricks. Not really working on it. I mean, a little bit. I'll, I'll show you. But I wanted to tell you guys, we're caught up with farming now. We're going to get back to work. Things are a mess. I'm going to start getting things back in order here real soon. But I wanted to throw a video at you. I'll probably put out a couple this week, maybe a couple next week, and get back to my one a week. Decent. Decent quality anyway, I hope. So, not going to really work on that this morning. Well, it's afternoon. Let me show you what I got going on. So, on Sneaky Tricks, we are finally getting around this fuel system. Now, I don't know that I would suggest this company. It's fine. It's just kind of a pain getting the right parts and fittings. Let me get you in closer parts and fittings and all the stuff you need for this darn thing. I know it's crooked. So here's what we come up with. Bought the fuel pump and it came with this check valve. And I kind of like it. It had copper bushings on it so it would seal a lot better than the O-rings they use on everything else. But the O-rings are fine. The problem is I can't find, for the life of me, the part that goes on here. I looked on uh, the website and I checked and it's got a, anyway, I can't find it. So we're not going to use it. Instead, I bought these. Well, I got one right here. This check valve. What it does is once you get the pressure up to whatever the fuel injection uses, I think it's in the 40s. 40, I don't have to check. When you shut the car off, it won't bleed back out, creating a long start. It'll hold the pressure, so the next time you hop in it, it should fire right off. So what I did is I bought barb fittings for the end, this is an extra cut I don't like. I would have preferred this mounted right on the end, but I'm, come on, I'm done crying about that. We'll use an inline check valve. This is, you know, an improved aluminum part. Got a rubber mount, 100 micron filter. It's also evil energy. And then on this end, we'll do another bar fitting. Now, the tank in this truck, the 71 C10 in Spanish gold, the tank is pretty clean, but I won't say there's it's spotless. So I'm going to run one of these $2 filters on there temporarily so I can pre-filter everything out of the tank before it goes into this more expensive filter, before it goes into my pump to ruin anything, before it goes into my fuel injection system. I'll run this for a year. We'll see how boogered up it gets if it, we can keep an eye on it that way. Maybe I'll run them two years, but eventually my plan is to get rid of that and we'll put a brand new hose in from there to the fuel tank. It's just a couple of feet. We will use the probe hoses for all this. Um, short, short shots. I'm going to use the high pressure clamps the whole nine yards. But there's my system. This side of the pump is low pressure. It's actually vacuum, to be honest with you. Just the pressure of the fuel coming out of the tank. Siphon, if you will. So I got this in order. I can climb under there and do it. But you're not really going to want to be on the floor with me doing that so I'll I'll probably show it to you when I'm done like everything else but let me take you over to the 1968 I'm working on as well this is a little more yeah I got so much stuff this has been fun if you recall I was making a new bracket and that's what I got right here painted I see on the video you can't see it very well but I got a, a coat of paint on that and that's gonna hold the track bar Okay, enough of that. Let's get to the track bar. <clears throat> so here's the track bar. And this is what we gotta deal with today. Originally the track bar came with, with these on both ends. That's the way they're designed. And it's nice bushing and it's gonna last a long time. I liked it. The problem was when we maneuvered a lot of stuff for the rear end, we've got a different uh, rear differential in it. And you can't put this track bar on the original location because this end is cockeyed too bad. Anyway, so now we got a Heinz joint on there. And it's got a swivel end on it so you can get whatever angle you need. It's gonna, it's gonna work perfect. Problem we run into now is the bracket on the frame is wide enough for this end, the original end, and it would be too sloppy for this Heinz joint. So I'll show you what we're gonna do over here on the lathe. I'm gonna move you again. And do a shop tour while we're talking. 
So over here on the lathe. Alright, I'll just give me a second, I'll get you in there. On on it, well, I got you in my run out first. I'm making a bushing. So I've got the bushing all set up. And you can see here this is on zero. And here my run out is is nothing. I can turn that around and, and the needle barely moves at all. And the only movement in that needle would be the surface finish on that bushing. Not that critical. I'm probably being too fuss, fussy already. So I mic'd out that Heim's joint. It comes to 0.725. Well, 0.75 would be three quarters of an inch. So it's probably a three quarters Heim's joint. They make it just ever so, well, 0.25 and 0 0.025 of an inch. T tiny, tiny amount. Nothing to be worried about here. It, it's probably for fitment. So you have a little bit of movement. Once we crush that Heim's joint in there, any little bit I'm off is, is going to be negligible. So that's my next part is to part off a couple of these bushings for each side of that Heim's joint. Get that put away. Like trying to put this away. I'll do that later. Did I say later? <laughs> I did. I said later. It's always something for later. I can't leave it because it'll be later. I wonder if it's because I've got to unlock it. And you guys want to stand here and watch me do this stuff? This is what old guys do. Worry about this stuff like this. Now, you don't want to smash this tight because you'll throw it off. But you can get it close. They're my grandfather's. Passed away in, oof, many years ago. Still using some of his tools. There, we don't have to do that later. <laughs> Not gonna say later again either. All right, so there's what's going on this week. I'm running back over to the truck. That's what I'm gonna be doing. Uh, I actually just today, and then we'll get back on this girl. Yeah, it's a girl. Why not? Very soon. Keep her covered for all this dust. I've been doing some woodworking. I got some farm love and fool stuff over here. I've been working on uh, old cutter bar. That'll be on my other channel if you care about farm stuff. Got a bunch of stuff going on there as well. But I'm going to start putting the videos back out. I appreciate your patience. And, uh, uh, well, I'm always thinking of something. There'll be more. There's always more. i got to shut this thing off. We'll get back on this track by here in a minute. There's always something to work on every time. All right, here we go. How many times is it going to take? I say one. Here we go. And one.